Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with another After Effects tutorial for you to have a go at. Now, uh, some of you may remember that uh, well over a year ago I posted a tutorial on YouTube called uh, Laser Etched Metal, and it was a two part tutorial. And uh, if you followed it, you'll know that um, it showed you how to create this effect, but part of the creation required a significant amount of manual position keyframing to follow the uh, outline of the text and pin that to the laser beam effect. Now at the time I wasn't really aware of an automatic way of doing that but I've been thinking about it and uh, I may have come up with a slightly more sophisticated solution. So if you're looking at creating an effect like this where a single point effect uh, traces the outline of anything um, then this tutorial should be of some use to you. So uh, let's get started. What I'm going to do is uh, create a composition and we'll call this Trace Comp. Um, as usual, I'm using the 720p preset, uh, 25 frames per second, and in this case, it's eight seconds long. And we'll just hit OK. So, grab our text tool, and we'll create some basic text. I'll just line it up a bit. Now the first point of this effect is to uh, convert the text into masks. So you do that by right clicking on the text layer you've just created and select create masks from text. Now this is a feature that's specific to CS4 and later versions. So uh, CS3, um, you might be able to do it. I think it's uh, create outlines from text. Can't remember that far back. It's all been a little bit long. So I'm just going to select create masks from text. And what that will do is uh, hide the visibility of the original text it's still there, but what it does is it creates a solid and then applies the masks you can see around the outline. So essentially we've got uh, a series of masks that create you recreate the text that's underneath. And what this allows us to do is uh, apply the stroke effect. So go to your effects and presets panel, find the generate stroke effect and drag this onto the trace this outlines layer. And in the effect controls panel Toggle the All Masks switch and set it to On Transparent. Now I'll uh, show you what that allows us to do. If we uh, increase the brush size to 8 and make it a little bit more visible, by adjusting the end point value, the stroke effect will trace all of those masks sequentially, exactly as we've, uh, we've set it to. But what we want to do is convert this into uh, something that we can use to apply particle effects or position related um, point effects like you saw in the, uh, the footage I had up earlier. So with the timeline indicator at the beginning of the timeline, click the stopwatch on end to create a keyframe and we'll set that to zero. Then we'll move the timeline indicator to the end of the composition and we'll create another new keyframe of 100%. Now if I just scrub through, you can see that gives us an eight second long stroke animated duration. There's a little bit of housekeeping we need to do um, to make this uh, automated solution work effectively. Now if you look at each individual mask you'll see that we've got these uh, points with circles around them. They actually represent what After Effects has chosen to use as the starting node. Um, so if you watch carefully you'll see that the animation on each letter always begins from the starting nodes on each mask. Now to make this effect work um, more efficiently, we're going to make sure that the, uh, the starting nodes are all along the top line. And the reason for that will become clear later. So you right click the node, go to Mask and Shape Path, and select Set First Vertex. And we're just going to make sure the first vertex for each mask is set to the top. Okay, so once you've done that, you should be looking at something like this. Now the next step is to create an expression for the start point. So I'm just going to twirl down the effect properties in the composition settings. And holding down Alt, click on the start stopwatch to create an expression. Uh, just use the pick whip to parent that value to the end value of the stroke effect. We haven't quite finished yet. 
at the end of the expression that you just created, type minus 0.05. Now what that will do was uh, make sure the start point trails just ever so slightly behind the end point. And the end result of that is instead of a line that draws all the way around the outside of the text, we actually have a small dot that represents the leading edge of the effect that we've just created. What I'm going to do is just uh, drop the stroke brush size down to 4. And as you can see, it just traces around the outside edge of our text, which is pretty much what we want. Then I'm going to select the Trace This Outlines layer and hit Control, Shift and C to pre-compose it. And we'll just call it Trace Precomp, and we'll move all the attributes into the new composition. We do that because if, if we don't, the next step won't work. So the next step is to go to the Tracker window. Now, if you don't have the Tracker window visible, you can go to Window and uh, select Tracker just to bring it up into uh, the default workspace. Now, with the Tracker window up, click on the Track Motion button and make sure that the motion source is Trace Precomp Layer. That's the precomp you just created. And you'll see we'll get this uh, tracker target point up here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this track point until it's over the dot that we've created. And we'll just zoom in and make sure it's centered. Now if you've never used the tracker before, there are a um, couple of things you need to know. The inside box represents the amount of information that the tracker is looking for. The outside box represents the area in which it looks for that point. Now as we've got a black transparent layer and a white dot on the beginning, you should get a very, very accurate track because there's nothing else that's likely to confuse it. But what we're going to do is just increase the outside area, the search area for this track point, until it's fairly significant. And because all the motion is happening from left to right, we can actually take a little bit of a risk and drag the uh, search area over to the right so it's looking a little bit further forward. Now basically what we need to do here is make sure the um, tracker area is large enough to cope with any of the jumps in the text where it, uh, the, the dot leaves the end of one character and moves to the next. So you may need to play around with uh, your settings to get the best result. And uh, also bear in mind the larger you make the search area the slower this effect will be. So. I've set the track point, we know exactly what we're going to follow, we've set the track area, so hopefully that'll, uh, that'll be large enough to uh, spot any jumps. Next stage is just to hit the play button on the analyze forward um, section of the tracker window. And as you can see, what it's doing is it's following that little white dot as it tracks around the text. Now the information that the tracker um, is creating is stored in the uh, trace precomp layer, um, but basically that will provide any um, center point position value um, for any effects you want to apply to it later. Um, so this is going to take a little bit of while, but it's uh, it's a hell of a lot um, faster than uh, sitting there and keyframing these points individually. So uh, even if you do have uh, a large project, it allows you to hit go, go and get a cup of coffee, and come back when it's finished. So uh, rather than having you wait until it's gone through the entire project, I think I'll uh, fade to black here and we'll pick up when it's finished. Okay, so the, uh, the track has done its job and if I scrub through the timeline, you'll see that it's automatically created uh, position keyframes that uh, trace the outside of the text automatically. You'll find a new um, setting called motion trackers and tracker one, track point, will demonstrate exactly what we've got. So we've got confidence, that's largely irrelevant for effects, but it gives you an idea of how accurate After Effects thinks it's been, and attach point. Um, attach point is pretty similar to uh, feature center. So uh, just to give you an example of something we can do now, I'm gonna create a new solid. And call it particles. And find CC Particle Playground, or CC Particle System, sorry. Drop that onto the Particles layer.
and for the uh, producer position value I'm going to create an expression and just pick whip that to the feature center of our track point. Now when I go to the composition settings you'll see that we've got a rather insane amount of particles on the go here. So if I uh, cut down the birth rate to 0.1 and maybe the longevity to 1.5 and we'll say stars for the particles. We now have a particle uh, effect automatically tied to the outline of the text. So if I bring the visibility of the text back in, you can see it's traced around the outlines of the text rather nicely. Now that's not supposed to be a particularly good example of the awesomeness you can achieve with uh, this particular tool. It's just designed to show you that there is an automated way that you can speed up the keyframing um, section of this. The footage I have here you can see that I've um, parented the particle effect from uh, Trapcode's Particular plugin and also Andrew Kramer's excellent um, optical flares tool to create a laser cut effect um, that follows the outside of the text. So uh, that's pretty much all I had to say. I uh, hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.